Muslims are often portrayed as being the bad guys due to unfortunate events of the past. However, there have been many blockbuster movies that have either had a positive portrayal of Muslim characters or movies that have an overall positive depiction of Islam in general. Starting off with number 10, we have Salmon Fishing in the Yemen. 2011. This romantic drama starred Ewan McGregor, Emily Blunt, and Kristen Scott Thomas, and it tells of a fictional story of a British fish expert who gets employed by a millionaire fishing enthusiast, Sheikh, who wishes to fish for wild salmon in his native country of Yemen. Now, as the movie begins, you may expect there to be a negative portrayal of Arab Muslims, but you end up being very surprised to find the Arabic Sheikh. He's a very lovable character. As as well as the movie is very enjoyable and it's a lot more light-hearted than you might think. We must have faith, Dr. Alfred. Up next, we have Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves from 1991. Morgan Freeman portrays Robin Hood sidekick Azin Eddin Bashar al Baker. So clearly, Morgan Freeman is not Arabic, right? However, the movie does have a positive Muslim portrayal. Azim has great knowledge and helps out Robin Hood and his men, and we really see the type of person that he is by looking at one of the quotes from the movie. Salam, little one. Did God paint you? Did God paint me? <laughs> For certain. Why? Because Allah loves wondrous variety. Next up, we have the lion in the desert from 1980. So we go a little further back in movie history. So this movie is of the story of Omar Mukhtar, who is a 20th century Libyan revolutionary. It was produced and directed by Mustafa Akkad, and Anthony Quinn and Irene Papis star in the film. Anthony Quinn plays Mukhtar. The movie more specifically centers around Libya trying to free themselves from the Italians who colonized them. Omar Mukhtar's life is one of uncompromising morals and ethics as he goes forward with his mission. Now one of my favorite movies, Ali from 2001, starring Will Smith. The film Ali takes us to his first fight with Sonny Liston and portrays Muhammad Ali's battles with the United States legal system because he refused to join the military to go to war against Vietnam. And of course, ending with the iconic match dubbed Rumble in the Jungle against George Foreman. Ali is outspoken and he risks his career and reputation for standing up for equality, racial equality more specifically. Muhammad Ali became a Muslim and changed his name from Cat Cassius Clay Jr. Following suit with that, we have Malcolm X in 1992. So yeah, years before the release of Ali, there was Malcolm X, who was a very close acquaintance at one point with Muhammad Ali. This film was directed by Spike Lee, and this movie shows the life of the civil rights leader, Malcolm X, played by Denzel Washington. And we get to see his hardships throughout life, like the passing of his father at the hands of white supremacists. We also witness his eventual conversion to Islam. Angela Bassett plays Malcolm X. Ex's wife Betty. His commitment to promoting the truth is inspirational while not holding himself as a victim of his past is very inspiring to see on the big screen as well. Halfway in we have Kingdom of Heaven released in 2001. Kingdom of Heaven really serves as a peace message for the conflicts between the East and the West, with America still very unsettled by the 9-11 attacks. The film is very graphic, however, the film still is able to portray some of the biggest acts in Islamic history in a surprisingly positive way. Definitely a recommended film. I am Salahuddin. Salahuddin. In 2007's The Kite Runner comes in at number 4, directed by Mark Foster. The Kite Runner is a movie about the life of an Afghan youth from childhood all the way up into his 30s. The youth portrayed is Amir and he grows up as a selfish, spoiled, rich kid and he avoids helping his best friend through a tough time that he was going through. After escaping to America and living in guilt for years, Amir saw an opportunity to make up for the wrong that he did to his best friend named Hassan and he returns to Afghanistan to rescue Hassan's son. So we see that he still has flaws, right? But despite that, he can still grow as a person and do what he felt in his heart to do for the benefit of other people. The 13th Warrior from 1999 comes in at number three. The film focuses on Arabic Muslim traveler after he gets exiled to the North
northern barbarians. When he encounters the Vikings, Ahmed ibn Fadlan has an air of arrogance really because he's not the biggest fan of them. However, he and the Vikings develop respect for each other and his character displayed how Muslims can get along with and even learn from others who have completely different lifestyles and beliefs. Number two, we have The Reluctant Fundamentalists, released in the year 2011. So this film focuses on a successful young man from Lahore, Pakistan, whose life is no longer the same after the events of 9-11. As the attacks happened, Changez Khan was away for business, but when he returns to the United States, he comes back to a world where Islamophobia was at a whole new level. This film definitely definitely hit home for Muslims who also face violence and discrimination after 9-11. How do you feel about the United States of America? Agent Ford, I love the United States of America. And the number one film is The Message from 1976. And you know, I had to include this classic three hour long film that tells the story of the birth of Islam. The Syrian director Mustafa Akkad also directed this film and he had a lot of difficulty finding a Hollywood studio that would actually produce this film without casting a character to play the Prophet Muhammad because as you might know, the portrayal of the Prophet Muhammad is forbidden in Islam. Now the film was eventually made without showing the Prophet or any of the four caliphs, which of course then opened it up to being accepted by Muslims to watch. And the movie starred Anthony Quinn and Irene Papis, and the story itself covers a period from Muhammad's call to being a prophet through the reconquest of Mecca, and it touches on the lives of great people in Muslim history. This movie is still a favorite for Muslims all around the world. Okay guys, so first up on the list is a TV show titled Omar. Omar is actually a historical Arab television drama miniseries that was produced and broadcast by NBC One and directed by the Syrian director Hatim Ali. The series is based on the life of Omar ibn al-Khattab, which is the second Khalifa of Islam, and depicts his life from 18 years old until the moments of his death. The series had to face large controversy due to its depiction of Omar, Abu Bakr, Uthman, and Ali, the four Rashidin Khalifas, who Muslims believe should not be depicted. After the series was broadcast on NBC, it was translated into several languages for international broadcasts and subtitled in English on YouTube. It received great support from many different scholars and people watching it. Unlike other series, this series actually did not face any criticism in terms of its content, as the series depended largely on reliable historical established facts. Next up on the list of popular TV shows is the show titled Little Mosque on the Prairie. Little Mosque on the Prairie is a Canadian television sitcom created by Zarka Nawaz and produced by West Wind Pictures, originally broadcast between 2007 and 2012 on CBC. The series focuses on the Muslim community in the fiction fictional prairie town of Mercy, Saskatchewan. The primary institutions of the community are the local mosque, presided over by Imam Amar Rashid and located in the rented parish hall of the town's Anglican church. Unusual for a Canadian television series, Little Mosque received extensive advanced publicity in international media, with stories appearing in the New York Times, the Washington Times and the Houston Chronicle, as well as on CNN. NPR and the BBC. At the end of the show season on March 7, 2007, the show had attracted 1.1 million viewers or an average of 1.2 million for the season. CBC Television renewed the show for a second season consisting of 20 episodes which began airing on October 3, 2007 and continued to attract an average of 1 million viewers per episode. Another popular TV series is the historical Arabic drama television show titled Khaybar. Khaybar was directed by Muhammad Aziz and written by Yusri Al Gindi. The show stars Ayman Zaydan, Ahmad Maher, and Samih Al Sarati and focuses on the social, economic, and religious life of Arab and Jewish people during the time of Muhammad. It actually details a perceived notion of the Jewish community's characteristics. The show essentially sheds light on the results of the conflict between Jewish and Muslim business interests and it portrays the consequences of the battle and fall of Khaybar. Next up on the list is the TV show titled Salah al Din al Ayyubi, which is a 2001 historical Arabic television series directed by Hatim Ali which deals with the political events in the 6th century in the region of the Levant and Egypt. 
The series focuses on the biography of Salah al-Din and highlights his courage and wisdom as the series shows how he managed to unite the Muslims and crush the Crusaders in the Battle of Hattin. The series presents the historical narrative from an Islamic point of view and consists of 30 episodes starting from the birth of the protagonist and continues to display events in chronological order. Another popular TV show is called If He Were Among Us which is a Saudi Arabian television series for youth presented by Ahmed al shaghiri Each program the program has multiple segments and the main segment is essentially an interview with a young person. The interviewer asks questions such as, if the Prophet Muhammad were with us today, what would he say about blah? The second part of the show features a hidden camera focused on people in real life situations. The objective of the series is to essentially discuss what the Prophet Muhammad would do in the same situation as the camera subjects. The show has two seasons, each containing 15 episodes, and all of the episodes are also available to view on YouTube. Another popular TV show is Salam Cafe, which is an Australian comedy talk show. The show is produced by RMI TV and aired in April 2005 under the title Ramadan TV. It is hosted by Ahmed Imam and features Walid Ali and Susan Carland. The show presents a light-hearted, humorous view on life as a Muslim in Australia through a panel discussion and a series of sketches. The show was actually filmed in front of a live audience in Sydney and Melbourne and has won various antenna awards. Next up on the list is the series titled Science and Islam. Science and Islam is a three-part BBC documentary about the history of science in medieval Islamic civilizations presented by Jim Al Khalili. The series is accompanied by the book Science and Islam, a history written by Ihsan Mas'ud. The documentary contains several short segments with scientists and historians of science, including George Saliba, Simon Schaefer, Peter Portman, and Amira K. Benison. Another popular series is The Imam. The Imam series is a huge historical television series produced by Qatar Media Foundation. The series tells the full biography of Ahmed ibn Hanbal and the events that took place from the beginning of his family and social life until his death. The series also reviews the period of the rule of the Abbasid state as as well as the emergence of the Mu'tazili. Next up on the list is a show titled All American Muslim, which is an American reality television series that aired on TLC. The program follows the daily lives of five Lebanese American Shia Muslim families in Michigan, the largest Muslim community in the United States. Each episode follows members of the various Shia Islamic families going through the events of their daily lives, with emphasis placed on how their faith affects their actions. Interview segments with individual cast members are interspersed throughout in which they explain specific points of Islam and how they relate to various situations. Unfortunately, TLC had to cancel All American Muslim after one season, citing unfortunate low ratings. And finally on this list of popular Islamic TV shows is the American comedy drama television series whose main actor and creator recently actually won a Golden Globe Award, known as Rami. Rami follows a first generation American Muslim who is honest spiritual journey in his politically divided New Jersey neighborhood. It explores the challenges of what it is like being caught between an Egyptian community that thinks life is a moral test and a millennial generation that thinks life has no consequences. On Rotten Tomatoes, the series holds an approval rating of 96% with an average rating of 8.43 out of 10. The website's critical consensus reads, an insightful and hilarious glimpse into the life of a Muslim American family, Rami perfectly articulates the precarious nature and nuances of identity and announces Rami Youssef is a talent to watch. So I was curious to know what are some non-Muslim celebrities who played Muslim characters? We have Dakota Fanning. The term whitewashing has been used a lot more as of recently, especially for this one. In The Sweetness in the Belly, Dakota Fanning plays a child refugee who is raised as Muslim after being abandoned in Ethiopia by her parents. So we see Muslim in Ethiopia. And now people on Twitter weren't too happy about this one. One Twitter user wrote, Am I in the Matrix? So many talented actors out there and you cast Dakota Fanning? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. And to play an Ethiopian? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. I beg your pardon? Question mark, question mark, question mark, a whole bunch of them. And I get it, like I get both sides too, you know? Actors are casted for their ability to portray a character or another real life person, and other times their actual ethnic and religious backgrounds don't match up like, at all. 
Now this whole thing was of course a big misunderstanding because even Dakota Fanning herself, she came out and she said, just to clarify, in the new film I'm part of, Sweetness in the Belly, I do not play an Ethiopian woman. I play a British woman abandoned by her parents at seven years old in Africa and raised Muslim. In any case though, I think that this sparked an interesting conversation around whitewashing in films and how to cast people more accurately. But at the same time, you know, guys, it's important to understand everything before you jump to conclusions. But let me know your thoughts about this. Like, are you for or against whitewashing, if you want to use that term? Do you think it doesn't matter because it's just a film anyways, like, it's not even the real person, it's just a depiction? Or do you believe that casting directors should go the extra mile to cast somebody as close as possible to the person that they're portraying. Moving on now to number nine, we have Will Smith. So Will Smith received an Oscar nomination for portraying the boxing champion, Muhammad Ali in the 2001 film Ali. So back in 2001, Will Smith and Muhammad Ali, they actually sat down with Oprah on her talk show to discuss the film. And when Oprah asked Muhammad Ali about Will Smith's portrayal of Ali, he actually replied, he scared me. Now Will Smith had this to say, you know, the greatest of all times, the champ looked at me and he gave me the nod that I did a good job. I worked as hard as I could possibly have worked. Now, if you've seen the movie Ali, you know, Will Smith, of course, he did a really awesome job. And no complaints about whitewashing for this one, obviously. But yeah, Will Smith also, clearly, he's not Muslim. The next celebrity at number eight is Arnold Vosloo. Arnold Vosloo was born in South Africa and he played the character Habib Marwan in season four of probably one of the biggest shows ever in TV history, 24. And you know, growing up, this was one of my favorite shows for a lot of reasons. So in this real-time TV show where every season takes place in one day, the character Habib Marwan was the mastermind behind the tax on LA. And he had immigrated from Turkey and then when he settled in LA, nearly five years he maintained as well as funded a number of terror cells, primarily in Los Angeles. And he was bent on making America pay. Quite the complete opposite of Arnold Vosloo in real life, who's like such a teddy bear of a guy, you just wanna give him a hug. But he himself does admit that he plays a very realistic bad guy. Yeah, it's that smirk that he has, just that, that sinister smile. Next up at number seven, we have Naveen Andrews, and he's known for playing Saeed Hassan Jara, from the ABC's show Lost. His character was a former Iraqi soldier as well as a practicing Muslim who prayed on the mysterious island as well as you see him attending the mosque in flashbacks in the show. Now the actor Naveen Andrews, he was born in London and his parents immigrated from Kerala, India. He was brought up in the Methodist denomination of Christianity and he describes his upbringing as very repressive. He says at the age of 16, he actually fell in love with his 30 year old math teacher and then he actually moved in with her to escape his abusive home. Then they had a son, Jaisal, who was born seven years later, back in 1992. Himesh Patel comes in at number six. Himesh Patel played Tamwar Masood on the soap opera East Enders. Now his family on the show was actually the first Muslim family to join ever since the Kareems who appeared on the show between 1987 and 1990. And they're also the first Asian family to be introduced to the show since the Ferreira family back in 2003 to 2005. Okay, so it's time to reveal the last five celebrities of this episode. At number five, we have LL Cool J, and he portrayed Sam Hanna on the TV show NCIS Los Angeles. Now, he's a former US Navy SEAL and senior NCIS special agent. Now, in season nine of the show, in an episode titled The Silo, that's when he revealed that he was a devout Muslim, and it was something that he had previously hinted to on several occasions throughout the show. Now, the actor LL Cool J, on the other hand, is a hip hop artist turned actor, and he's a devout Methodist Christian. So much Chaya comes in at number four, and she portrayed the character Goldie Nahir in Degrassi. Now, her character is a graduate of Degrassi Community School from the class of 2016, and she's an activist, a feminist, and of course, her character is a Muslim who looked for different ways to improve the Degrassi school. Now, Soma Chaya, aka Soma Bhatia, she's a Canadian actress and singer of Indian descent, and she's an advocate for living a vegan lifestyle and she actually has been vegan since she turned 14 years old although she was raised vegetarian from birth number three we have Nazanin Boniadi and she was born in Tehran Iran and she's an Iranian British actress as well as a human rights defender 
Now, in May of 2013, Nazanin Boniadi, she joined the cast of Homeland in season three, and she played the CIA analyst Farah Shirazi. And then from there, she began to appear on the show a lot more regularly, even into the fourth season. Now, in real life, Nazanin, actually back in the mid 2000s, she was dedicated to the Church of Scientology, and her mother had also been a Scientologist. Now, Nazanin Boniadi ended up leaving the Church of Scientology shortly after October of 2014, and that's when she started calling herself a non-practicing Muslim. So although now she's a non-practicing Muslim, whatever that means, at the time she took the role of the Muslim character Farah Shirazi, she herself was not a Muslim, she was a Scientologist. But while we're on the topic of Homeland, we gotta mention Damien Lewis. This guy is just a phenomenal actor. So his character, Nicholas, aka Nick Brody, he of course is a fictional character from Homeland as well. Now Homeland is also up there with one of my top shows. Like if I could describe it, it's like a slower paced, more realistic version of 24. But in any case, in the show, his character is a USMC sergeant who has been held as a prisoner of war and he converted to Islam due to radicalization to turn against the United States of America. Now in real life, Damien Lewis was born in London, England, and it's also known that in March of 2010, he became the trade justice ambassador for a charity called Christian Aid. And finally at number one, we have Anthony Quinn. So we go back to 1976 for that film, The Message. Hamza Ibn al-Mutalib, was a foster brother as well as a companion and paternal uncle of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. Now Hamza, he took little notice for years when it came to Islam, but he shortly after converted. Now the actor Anthony Quinn was uh, Mexican American. He also did painting and writing and film directing. Now when he was six years old, he actually attended a Catholic church and even thought about becoming a priest one day, but he went completely opposite of that and he tops this list at number one because he portrayed like a real muslim like you know the role that he played was like the original prophet muhammad companion muslims the first islamic film that i will mention is muhammad the messenger of god which is a 2015 iranian islamic epic film directed by majid majidi and co-written with kambuzia partovi the film is set in the sixth century where the story revolves around the childhood of the islamic prophet muhammad peace be upon him throughout the filming process majidi worked with a team of historians and archaeologists for the work on accuracy of the early life of prophet muhammad nonetheless the film received criticism originating from Sunni Arab countries, Saudi Arabia's Grand Mufti Abdul Aziz ibn Abdullah al-Sheikh condemned the film stating that the film depicts the Prophet in an untrue light and undermines the important role he plays in Islam. Despite the criticism, the film was selected as the Iranian entry for the best foreign language film at the 88th Academy Awards. Muhammad. Another popular Islamic movie is the 1976 film titled The Message, which was directed and produced by Mustafa Akkad, that also chronicles the life and times of the Islamic prophet Muhammad through the perspective of his uncle Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib and adopted son Zaid ibn Haritha. Released in both separately filmed Arabic and English language versions, The Message serves as an introduction to early Islamic history. The cast includes Anthony Quinn, Irene Papas, Michael Ansara, and Michael Forrest. The film was an international co-production between Lebanon, Kuwait, Libya, Morocco, Saudi Arabia, and the United Kingdom. The film went on to be nominated for the Best Original Score in the 50th Academy Awards, composed by Morris Jari. <laughs> Another popular film that details the life of the Islamic prophet Muhammad is Muhammad, Legacy of a Prophet, which is a PBS documentary film that details the prophet's life based on historical records and on stories of living American Muslims who call Muhammad the messenger of God. The film was produced in 2002 by Alex Cronimer and Michael Wolfe of United Productions Foundation and Kikim Media. The film has been used in communities, schools, universities, religious congregations, and civic organizations throughout the United States to increase Americans understanding of 
Muslims and Islam. Next up on my list is a popular American comedy documentary film known as The Muslims Are Coming. The film was co-directed and co-starring Nain Farsad and Dean Abedullah. It follows a team of Muslim American comedians as they tour the American South and Southwest performing free stand-up comedy shows and engaging in community activities with an aim to reach out to middle America and counter Islamophobia. Name that religion. We're going to read a quote. Mm -hmm. And you're going to tell us if it was Old Testament, New Testament, or the Quran. Another popular Islamic film is Malcolm X, which is a 1992 American epic biographical drama film about the African American activist Malcolm X. Directed and co written by Spike Lee, the film stars Denzel Washington in the title role, as well as Angela Bassett, Albert Hall, Al Freeman Jr., and Dilroy Lindo. The film dramatizes key events in Malcolm X's life, including his incarceration, his conversions to Islam, his ministry as a member of the Nation of Islam and his later falling out with the organization, and his marriage to Betty and pilgrimage to Mecca. Denzel Washington went on to win the New York Film Critics Circle Award for Best Actor and was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actor as well. A Muslim must be strikingly upright. I will not touch the white man's drugs, his liquor, his women. Another popular Islamic movie is Journey to Mecca in the Footsteps of Ibn Battuta, which is a dramatized documentary film charting the first real life journey made by the Islamic scholar Ibn Battuta from his native Morocco to Mecca for Hajj in 1325. The film was officially endorsed by Saudi Arabian Prince Turkey bin Faisal al Saud al Faisal, the youngest son of the late King Faisal, who wrote, not only does the film represent an accurate and respectful portrayal of Islam, it also provides a wonderful opportunity for Muslims to celebrate a revered hero in Ibn Battuta and to honor our faith. Journey to Mecca won Le Prax du Public Film Award at the Film Festival in Paris in 2009 and a prize at the Tribeca Film Festival in New York City. Next up on the list is the film titled Muslim, written as M O O Z L U M. Muslim is a 2011 American independent film written and directed by Kos Muslim Basir and starring Danny Glover. Muslim tells the story of an African American Muslim family whose lives are changed by the September 11 attacks and their aftermath. The film was initially promoted primarily through social media before opening for its limited theatrical release on February 11, 2011. The film has received an award from the Chicago International Film Festival as well as an official selection in the 34th Cairo International Film Festival. Another popular movie is Fatih 1452, which is a 2000 2012 Turkish epic action film directed and produced by Farouk Aksoy. The film is based on fictionalized events surrounding the fall of Constantinople, now Istanbul, to the Ottoman Turks during the reign of Sultan Mehmed II. The film opens in Medina during the time of the Islamic prophet Muhammad, year 627. Abu Ayyub al Ansari tells other Sahabas that Istanbul will be conquered by a blessed commander and army. The film was released on February 15, 2012, and it sold 1.4 million tickets on its first first weekend and 2.23 million tickets in the first week of release. Over the span of 18 days it became the most watched film ever in Turkey. The next popular Islamic film is the film titled Prince of Egypt, which is a 1998 American animated musical drama film produced by DreamWorks Animation and released by DreamWorks Pictures. The film is an adaption of the Book of Exodus and follows the life of Moses from being a prince of Egypt to his ultimate destiny to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. The film was released in theaters on December 18, 1998 and on home video in September 14, 1999. Reviews were generally positive, with critics praising the animation, music, and voice work. The film went on to gross over $218 million worldwide in theaters, which made it the most successful non-Disney animated feature at the time. So the last but of course not least film that I'm going to mention is the film titled Ali. Ali is a 2001 American biographical sports drama film written and produced and directed by Michael Mann. The film focuses on 10 years in the life of the boxer Muhammad Ali, played by Will Smith, from 1964 to 1974, featuring his capture of the heavyweight title from Sonny Listen, his conversion to Islam, criticism of the Vietnam War, and banishment from boxing. Ali opened on December 25, 2001 and grossed a total of $14.7 million in 2,446 theaters during its opening weekend. The film also went on to gross a total of $87.7 million worldwide. The champ is here. 